So for the first worksheet you're doing for the orthographic projection module, you're going to be picking three items from this page to draw orthographically. So I'm going to demonstrate a few of them um, by just picking a couple and showing what I'm expecting you to do for each of the sketches. So you're going to need a pencil, you're probably going to need an eraser, um, and you'll have the graph paper that you can print out. Um, make, your sh make sure that you put the um, title in here and your name here uh, next to drawn by and uh, you can just put N A for not to, to scale and then you can put a date here using the correct letter form for those spots. Alright so let's pick um, let's pick this first drawing right here and um, the first thing that we want to do is establish what we should use for a primary view this is going to go along with the lecture that we had uh, for this week's Zoom session. So I'm going to pick that face right there as our primary view, which means this is going to be the right side, and this is going to be the top. So I'm going to do that for that particular object. This may not be the same setup that you want to use for every one of these, but um, it probably will be fairly similar. Now even though this object would really only need two views to fully describe it, I would like you to draw all three views so that you get used to um, putting in a miter line and figuring out where things go. So the first thing we'll do is I'll start by putting um, the, the number that I'm using for this. This is uh, number one. And then I'll use the corner here to start the view and decide how many boxes wide this is by just kind of imagining dividing it up in evenly. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six boxes wide by four boxes tall by two boxes wide. Um, I think that will work. So you can use the boxes in the grid to do that. So this view is going to be um, I'm just going to kind of sketch it in first. One, two, three, four, five, six boxes wide. Two boxes up. Four boxes tall. One, two, three, four. And then this piece right here is two boxes wide. So you're just creating that L shape by sketching that in. So get that drawn initially according to um, that box count that we have here for each feature and then kind of sketch it in a little bit darker so you can see it. The next step is to um, lightly draw in construction lines. Try to make those straight. So if you want to use a straight edge you can, but lightly draw in those construction lines for the height and for the widths so that we can draw the top and the right side views next to the object. Make sure that there's at least one box width between the views. So this view here, um, the right side view, I would see that um, square stacked on top of this square in that right side view. And But I'm going to project it all into one plane. So my height for everything has been projected over from the front view. If I sketch in the width of the right side view, I know I want to make it two boxes wide. The base of the right side view I'd be able to see as an edge. The top of the right side view I'd be able to see as an edge. And this edge right here would show up as an object line in the middle. So this top square is this feature right here and this bottom square is this um, surface here in the foreground but it looks like it's all in one plane when we do this orthographically. So now it's the time where we want to put in our miter line and this is where the grid comes in handy. Use the diagonals of the boxes to put in a 45 degree angle line and then project the lines from the right side view that you created where they hit the miter line should be such that it creates the same width 
for this top view, two boxes wide, with the same distance between views, one box for that top view. And then we're going to use all the features we can see in that front view to project up and interpret that into what should be object lines or hidden lines or center lines. In this case, we just have object lines. This is a very simple object. So this top view would look like that. And this surface here is, I'll use circles or scribbles for that surface. So you can see is, is that, that rectangle right there is that surface. And this square up here is that surface. So we've now drawn all three views that I'd like you to draw, a front, a top, and a right side view. Um, and we've properly aligned them orthographically using third angle projection and we've used the miter line. So you're going to repeat that process um, two more times with at least two more objects on this page. And I'll have some additional videos if you need some help with some of them but I would like it if you just uh, tried it yourself and watch the videos only if you need to. Um, I think you might be able to fit all of this on one page. So the other sheet you're drawing objects from are the sheet that has objects with some circular features. And again, you're picking three, di three items from this page to sketch orthographically. So I'm going to pick this item here as my example one to do because this one um, will include um, locating hidden lines and center lines is we have circular features that a hole, for instance, that's passing through the object. I do want to point out that on these drawings, the lines that are showing up here, here, and here, you can ignore. Those are showing points of tangency. And that's just a result of the computer program that generated these three-dimensional models um, is uh, kind of pointing out where those points of tangency between the arc and the line R. They should not be shown in your drawing. Uh, so all the ones that I crossed out here should not be shown. Um, so let's go ahead and do that one as a demonstration. So I'm going to do um, the three circular feature items up here and I might be able to fit all three of the linear featured items down below. So I'll, I'll mark this as item two giving myself enough room for a front, top, and right side view. And I want to start with a primary view that's going to be giving me the most information I can uh, about the object in that, in that first primary view. So that means that should be the primary view, which makes this side over here the right side view, and then makes this direction here the top view. Okay. And I'm going to give some dimensions again uh, using approximate, you know, assuming this is one, two, three, four, five, six boxes wide. And to get this to work, I will count up this one, two, three, four, five boxes tall, let's say. Okay? So that should do it for us. Um, and the depth, I think this looks like this is two boxes wide here by another two boxes. So one, two, three, four. So I just need to draw that front view first. So I want to go one, two, three, four, five boxes tall by one, two, three, four, five, six boxes wide. So I'll start that view right here and go over one, two, three, four, five, six. A height of one, two, three, four, five and just make a very light box around that area. Um, this base here is only one box tall. And um, I'm going to stop there because now I've got to put in the circular features. So I, I need to locate the center of this view. So I'm going to put in a center construction line. Um, and then I need to locate the center of the arc that has a, this radius here and tangent to these points. So that looks like it's centered on the circle. 
So this is one, two, three boxes wide by three boxes wide on either, either uh, side of that center line, which means that I've got to go down one, two, three boxes down to find the center of um, the circle that fits up here. So I'm actually going to make a little adjustment to this because I'm realizing that I should go ahead and make this six boxes tall instead so that I can put the center of that circle one, two, three here and still have enough room for um, of, of the uh, circular feature, the hole if you will, so it, it doesn't hit the base. Okay. So I just made that little adjustment. Now I can sketch in the two quadrants of the circle that we can see from this perspective. And then I'm just going to guesstimate the size of that um, radius and go one and a half boxes from the center in all directions. So that I end up with a square in the middle that allows me to be able to sketch in a circle. These don't have to be perfect, but you see what I'm doing by sketching the square first. It allows me to draw that circle fairly well without having to just draw it freehand. So now I have all the features and I, I made those construction lines a little bit too dark, so I'm going to erase them. So now I have all the features including the center mark for that front view. Whoops. And you want to make sure that I can see the difference between your object lines and your center lines and hidden lines so that the object lines look thicker. So if you have to go over again to make them a lot thicker than your center lines, that's okay. Or just erase those center lines and make sure you draw them thinner. So that's the fir first view, the primary view. That's the one where the most work had to be done. So now I'm going to project all of these features over including projecting from the bottom and the top of that circle or the hole and the very top of the arc. And we go back and reference what's the thickness of um, this section here. I, I use two boxes wide and I want to make sure I have at least one box between views. So I've got four boxes width here. So I want to go over one box at least or maybe two. I'm going to use two this time and go over one, two, three, four boxes. And what we'd see from the side would be an L shape like this. So let's make that darker. But that's not the only piece of information we'd see here. We'd also need to see, whoops, made an error there. That's where the object line would be. Um, so we also need to see where these this hole would produce hidden lines. So let's make hidden lines like this here and here. And then in the center of this hole we would have a center line showing the side view of that centered that that hole um, centered on the um, top part of that view. So now everything's been projected and lined up in that direction. So the next thing I would do is project up and project from all the same features. But before I start to draw that top view, I want to put in my miter line again. And notice this time the miter line is coming from the two lines that we use to project the view, the, uh, view information to the top and the right side view where they intersect is where that miter line should come from. This needs to be a 45 degree angle and then we can use the information we've already drawn from the right side view to project over to the top view. And once I have that drawn, I need to pay attention to where the lines are coming from and to so that I understand which features they are and draw the correct kind of line. But these would create object lines here that I could actually see. We'd also have an object line here in the back and we'd see an object line here for this edge. 
these lines that we projected up that show the location of where the edge of the hole is would become our hidden lines in the top view. And then the very center would become a center mark. So now our top view is ref reflecting the same features that we see in our front and uh, right side views. Uh, we're able to see the hidden line features for the hole, the center line that shows where the center of the hole is. So that's a, an example of um, an object with circular features correctly drawn, including the center marks that locate the centers of those circular features. So those are the two examples I wanted to show you here um, to be able to complete this assignment.